when God gave the nations the church he gave that nation the answer to their problems because God's kingdom is not just a spiritual place what you don't know is that God's kingdom is a country there's power in knowledge there's power in information there's power in knowing something if you know what has been written concerning health it is easy to claim healing if you know what has been written concerning finance it is easy to claim wealth if you know what has been written concerning business you, there are words in the scriptures that have you run to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abel brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. Um, you know, yesterday I did a lot with um, teaching on identity crisis. Let me spend a little time before you go and just address something. Why is womanhood in a state of confusion? Why is womanhood in a state of confusion? Why is the agitation for the global agitation for woman rights, the freedom of womanhood? Why is it? Why is the agitation? You know? Everywhere you go, you find one woman group or another advocating and agitating for rights, equal rights, this right, that right. Maybe most of you don't know about it because of course, young people nowadays hardly read. Young people today are hardly current with the trend of things in their nation or in the world. Which even makes the matter worse. Because you can't solve a problem you have no knowledge about. You can't deal with any situation you have no knowledge about. I know a woman who is married. The husband bought her a Prado. Is that a Prado? Um, yes. A Prado Jeep or something. A Land Cruiser. 2017 model. Latest one. Gave the woman as a gift. The last time the woman came to see me, she came to see me because of emptiness. You know, I saw the, the picture of the, you know, everything the husband has done for her. Why she wasn't even talking to me, she was even receiving a lot of mega money in her phone. The husband was sending her. I asked her a problem. Is there anything wrong with your husband? No, he's the most caring man in the world, she said. She said all kinds of good things about the man. But now what is her problem? I don't love the man. What's her problem? I don't want the marriage. Have you told him no? So what do you want? But I won't talk to you about that other side. Her heart is with some other person and she, she doesn't know what to do. Even up to yesterday, she's sending text messages and you know, talking to me about the emptiness. This is not the life she wants. I said, what other life do you want? You have car. You have house. Very wonderful children you have. You go to the best school. You are flying the world. What other life are you looking for? And she keeps crying, I'm not complete. I said, so what do you want me to do? What the, You just have to stay there. What do you want us to do now? And I've done all the talking I can do. It seems like it's not entering. And the only thing that ministered to my heart was if that woman knows what some of you are privileged to know now, some years back, if she asked the right questions before she said, I do, maybe she wouldn't have had that kind of life. Because that's what many ladies are living for. They think it's about getting married. On wedding day, the excitement is high. The makeups are on. The wedding gown is costly. It will finish. You will enter the meeting. You think it's about having children. You think it's about the car the husband bought for them or will buy for them. You will find them that they can do all those things for you. It won't stop you from cheating. 
I found that most people who are busy, ladies who can't find satisfaction in their homes, vacuum. Vacuum. I want to help you fill that vacuum now. So that is the only thing that has capacity to complete you well. You can live this your life. I'm not advocating for singlehood. I'm not advocating for, that's what I'm saying, for single parenting. That's not, but let's assume your husband dies. God forbid. Or let's assume nobody ever says to you, will you marry me? Let's assume you don't ever get married in this world. You don't ever have children in this world. What can complete your life? Yes, that's the question. What can complete your life? Have you ever asked? What is the force or the element that is capable of making me a complete woman? Because that's exp- that explains the reason why the world is confused. Why the world of womanhood is in utter crisis. Why they are jumping from pillar to post. I don't want to get back to the things I said yesterday. If you got it, congratulations. If you didn't get it, pray that God gives you understanding. So the best gift you can be given in life is the gift of freedom. You have to be free in your mind. I want to address something briefly. Understanding the place of a woman. Because this is where the issue also is. A woman is battling with knowing her place. <laughs> where is my place? In my family. You are living in your father's house. Maybe you are the first daughter. Then a third daughter, a second daughter comes. A third daughter comes. A fourth daughter comes. And finally a fifth son comes. And you are made to know from time began that that guy is the one who is a real child. You are just ad hoc child. You are just a temporal child. You are meant to be sold out one day. So all through the woman's life, she's asking, where is my place? In my own father's house, where is my place? When I'm hardly sought for, when I'm hardly, my opinion is hardly considered. My stay here is just for a while. After some years of growing up and going to school, I'll end up bearing a man's name. Yes, anyway, that's okay. Because the scripture in that context, the Bible says that therefore shall a man leave his mother, father, and all that, and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one. So from when a woman is born into her family, she's meant to think she has no place. No place in the family, no place in the home. Even when she finally gets married, the cycle continues. Have you seen how women are treated when they lose their husbands? In Africa especially. In Ebo land. Have you seen the way they are treated? Once that covering the path, except that family the woman is married into is a Christian family. It is hard for the people to think this woman is part of this family. So the man is dead now. They start faulting the woman. What did you do to kill our son? Is she not your daughter also? I wish God helped you guys understand what I'm called to do. If you understand it, your approach to me and your approach to this ministry will change. Do you know there's one prayer? I said, God, if I can't impact this generation, if God, I, can't, I can't change. I can't preach a different message other than this message of transformation. If I cannot help this generation, take me now. I'm one of those men who is not afraid of death. Take me now. Can't do deliverance ministry, please. Even if it's going to give me the greatest crowd in the world, I can't do it. It's not my calling. My calling is to deal with things. Like somebody sent me a text. They say, Sir, you search deep into things. How do you come up with this kind of information? And I, or how do you do these things? I say, I don't know myself also. 
But I know this is where people have issues, problems. I like to go into areas people hardly see and deal with those things. I wish we have more crowd of women, maybe the whole women in a a boy state, to talk to. You will see what people are going through. I don't need to come into a meeting and come and do power move, power move. Just by educating ladies on this issue, you will see what people... I've seen people who went for meetings, went for programs. Programs finished, they still went with their problems. They finish preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and display all gymnastics. But the woman is still dying inside. The guy is still suffering inside. One of the laws of reformation is that you must be able to understand people. If you're going to be a reformer, you know I'm not a pastor as you see me to be. I'm not a one normal pastor, one normal reverend in town. No. I am a reformer, a social reformer, a people reformer. One of the laws of reformation is that you must be able to understand people. What are the battles waging people? What are the needs of men? What are the needs of women? Why do people act the way they act? So when I go for most meetings, I see people organizing town. I see a lady shouting and crying because... I say, this thing you are shouting and crying for is not your problem. If they give you that car now, you have a big problem still. <laughs> have I not seen people who dress up nicely on a Sunday morning and they are going to church? The man he has his suit on with his tie and iPad. The woman has a, a showcase on and all that and they are in a Range Rover Jeep. But they just fought the previous night. But when they go to church, come and join me, sing hallelujah. They finish dancing and singing. The pastor has no idea on how to solve the problem. Homes are breaking up. Children are getting more into vices by the day. These are the things I'm looking out for. Because the purpose for church is to change society. God didn't plant church here for religious purposes. The purpose for the church. So if, if I see churches exploding... And geometrically, vices are increasing. There's a problem somewhere. Hello? I'm not surprised when I see more generators in town because we have a power problem. But if we don't have power problems and we are seeing too much of generators, too much of... In the US now, you would be... Failure in generator business if you start one day. Are you starting a generator business for when they have steady light? You will make bad markets. Here the thing is moving. Why? Because power problem. So get into generator business. You make money. So I'm not surprised seeing too much of generators in town. Because of power problem. So the purpose of the generator now is to do what? Address the power problem. Is that correct? Is that correct? Eh? So that's the same way the church is. What's the purpose of church? To address problems. But the problem is now, if the problems are increasing more than they, or the churches are increasing, and as churches increase, the problems are increasing. I thought when churches increase, the problems should be reducing. I thought when churches increase, brothels should be going down. There was a day I came to my house. There was no light in my house. I looked on the whole street. There was light. I called my boy. I said, come and check. What is going on? There's no light in the house, but there's light. It's a size generator. So I came out on my balcony, looked at the whole buildings. Every building was lighting up. I said, now wow. The guys were selling generators now, making money. Everywhere, you wouldn't know there was no depot light. You wouldn't know. You will know. You would think that there was never light, except you listen carefully and you hear the sound of the gens. Everywhere was lighting up. So it, th- that day there was no difference between having your gen on and having never light. So I said, "Okay, we won't be left alone. Go and draw our own too." 
We went and drew our own generator, so we complemented the thing. That's what it should be. When we have churches, people should not see problems. If you have generator, you shouldn't see darkness, should you? Where there's darkness and there's no gen, that's a bigger problem. God put us here to generate light. Not to generate demons. To generate light. Help people. Help our nation. What's the place of a woman? I studied one time on different, you know, agitations and movement. Of course, there's this popular guy. Many of you may not know him. His name is James Brown. He sang a song that this is a word of women. A word of men, rather. And, you know, it became a popular ideology that the woman had no place in this world. Because people were singing it. People were saying it, that this world belongs to women, if I, or to men. At the time, they even used scriptures to show you that women are not supposed to even participate in it. Yes, I've seen preachers who talk with Bible. They quote Bible and tell you that the women should be quiet. They should not. There's a purpose for that. I will show you the purpose for that scripture. It was Paul's writing. And I'll show you what it means for women to be silent in the church. Yeah. Now I'll tell you why. Because women were not conducting themselves in the manner that was expected of them. As a result, Paul gave that instruction. It doesn't mean that women are to be, you know, Puppets are to be robots and all that. That's not what it means. So that belief was going around the world. Women, uh, they don't have a place in the nation, no place in the society. They don't have any place in the world. The woman is just like um, any other possession the man has. Hmm? That has been the belief. As a whether you know it or not, that is how the world sees you. That's why we're trying to correct it. So you will rise above that limitation. So for decades, especially from the 1960s, there was an uproar. Women began to agitate because the suppression was becoming too much. They began to agitate globally. They began to form synergy together, especially in the West and some part of Europe, they were coming together to, you know, drive home the agitation and agitate for rights, equal rights with the men. So they started different campaigns, carrying placards, carrying banners, going to state houses of, uh, you know, state houses, government houses, like in the U.S., they go to Washington, D.C., stand in front of the White House with their placards and their banners and advocating for equal rights with the men. Of course, there have been different legislation. Different parliaments of the world have sat down in Europe, like in Sweden, in the, you know, North America, in U.S. and some places have sat down to address that issue. And different laws and bills have been, you know, promulgated to ensure that women are put at par with the men. But still, no matter how you write it in laws that women are equal with the men, in reality, men refuse to accept that. Hello? Hello? Even the men who are writing it into law don't agree. Just want to pacify the woman. They don't agree. Let me bring it back home to this issue of equality. Because a lot of people are still debating it. Is the woman actually equal with the man? The woman, I'm going to answer that question now. The woman is actually equal with the man. Nothing makes them, nothing makes the man superior. And nothing makes the woman inferior. <laughs> Now, some people have just worn their religious eyeglass. I know some of you came with catapult, especially the men. Don't worry, we will handle issues. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'll show you. 
the man and the woman were created equal but created different. What we have been mistaken for equality is actually difference. As for equality, yes, we are. What is different between the man and the woman is position. God gave us different positions. But let me let you know that the woman, you know we talk about equal, 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 equal. <laughs> I think the opposite of equality should be inequality. That means one thing is greater than the other one. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Yes, I told you that man does not mean the male species. Man is a spirit. Man is not the male sex. Man is a spirit. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them rule the fish of the sea. The question is, if God said, let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have dominion, if the focus was man as it were, the male species, why did God not say, and let him have dominion? Then if he was talking about the plurality of the male species, he shouldn't have said, let us make man. He should have said, let us make men. If he's going to use they, he's supposed to say, let us make men. Please, am I talking to the right people? If you want me to turn here into a deliverance center, I'm going to drop the mic and call some of these guys. Some of them are around as Yoku here and all that. I'll call them to come and do you ginger. Do you shake, shake, shake. I'm not caught up for that. So respond with me. Let me deal with some of the things holding you back. So he should have said, let us make men. In our image and likeness, I let them beautiful. But let us make man. Let us let them. Because you can't quantify man. Man is neither singular nor plural. Let them. The them there is talking about the two species that will carry the same software. The them, dear, he's talking about the two. Okay, can, can, I, can I read it? He said, let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. Yes, the next verse. So God created man in his, in his own image. Now see what he did here. He created him in the image of God. He created them. You see the them again? The first thing is he created him. In the image of God. The him there is not the male species. The him is the software. He created him in the image of God. He created them, male and female. So what did he do? He created him first, the man. When he created the man, he now created the box. The male jacket and the female jacket. So the purpose of creating him is to ensure that what the male and the female carries is him. He first created him. After he created him, he now made male and female and he put him inside both of them. Sit down. That's what he did. That's the mathematics. He created him. The male man carries him and the female person carries him too. The him is the image God created. That's the software. The way he had done that, now see the charge he gave. The next verse. See the charge. God blessed them, the male and the female. And God said to them, be fruitful. <laughs> Hello? The Bible didn't say God said to the man, then, to the woman. If he said to the man, it means the instruction he gives the man would certainly be different from the instruction he gives the woman. 
But he said to them, that means the same instruction God is giving to the man, he's giving to the woman at the same time. So God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. So what now is the equality between the man and the woman? The dominion mandate. The dominion mandate. Nothing else makes the man different from the woman. Both of them are the same. The dominion mandate. If a man can build a university, nothing stops the woman from building one. So they are equal. If a man can own a private jet, nothing stops the woman from owning a private jet. So they are equal. We have limited women so much. They are equal. In terms of the church, God gave them. They are equal. But now, in terms of position, they are different. The subject is not a subject of equality. The battle between the woman and the man is not supposed to be a battle of equality. It's, it's actually a battle of difference. That's the battle. The both genders are different. Their positions are different. The way God created them is that one should take a position of headship. Then the other one takes a position of submission. That's the position. Hello? Hello? Do you know you are equal with Dave Mai? As a citizen of this state, you know what makes both of you equal? The constitution. The right I have to life is the same right he has to life. The right I have to health is the same right he has. The difference now between me and Dave is position. But we are equal. Please. One plus one is equals to what? Two. Three plus two is equals to what? Uh, one plus six is equals to what? Let me shock you. It is not what you are adding to what that is the issue. It is what comes out of the addition. That is why it's called equal to. Hello? Equal to. So that this one is called one and this one is called seven is inconsequential. It is what it gives birth to. That's the equality. So it's eight that is the matter here. Because whether you like it or not, remove one. You can't have equal to. So if you remove one and it's seven there, the equal to is seven. Equality is not a debate. We have, mis we have mistaken the thing. The issue is helping the woman understand her position, her difference, then helping the man understand his position and his difference. Jesus said, I and my father are one. Equality talks about unity. I and my father, we are one, but our positions are different. So there is God the Father, there is God the Son, there is God the Holy Ghost, but they are one. So there is man, there is woman. They carry the same thing, but their positions are different. Why the man takes the position of headship? Of course, that position of headship only plays out in two places. One, in spiritual authority, and number two, in family. Finish. So as a man, go and be demanding from your female classmate submission. You're making a mistake. 
don't, don't you know I'm a man in this class? You are not the husband, sir. Hello? You are not. The headship team plays in the life of a woman one in spiritual authority. The person who has that right is your pastor. Then the second person who has that right, your husband. Can't go and be exercising dominion over a woman who is not your wife. Come here, kneel down now. You are a traitor, not a. She's not your wife, she's not your daughter. That has shipped in place. In, okay, you can even add father, biological father. But it's for even a while. Because the moment the woman switches into her home now, the father's authority ends. Can't address that lady anyhow again. The man in charge is the man in charge now. Is this in entering somebody? You, you need to get it because if you get this thing inside your spirit, you will stop you stop running in circles. You stop being confused about who you are. You stop seeing the man as superior to you. The opposite of superior is inferior. God didn't make man superior and make woman inferior. He made both superior. Both are superior. But they have their differences. And the difference between the man and the woman is what makes word, the word interesting. Is what makes that, that is what creates need for compliments. That is what makes room for uniqueness. What, would, what in heaven's name will make me attracted to this guy now? Please answer. I see him and I'm feeling love fever for him. What in heaven's name? And then I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh my God. How I love you. Where are the things to make us blend? Where are the things? Where are the assets? Where are they? Just wake up in the morning and I just call him. I just want to let you know how I feel about you. Feel about what? What do I feel? That's why you see these guys in gay homosexuality. It tells you Satan has taken over their mind. It's not natural. Is it natural? That a man will see a fellow man. Hey, give me the... I thought... Okay, now, the skin is different, you see? Hey, Jesus. <laughs> I have to depart quickly. If I touch this guy now, for where? Nothing. If you like put both of us on the same bed, I'll be like a log of wood tomorrow morning. There's no chemistry that would tell me what. Because it's like bringing hardware plus hardware together. It's like programming a hardware with a hardware. How? Hardwares don't drive hardwares. It's softwares that drive hardwares. Amen. It, it will work. So we are different. The man responds different. The woman responds different. The man thinks differently from the woman. The woman feels differently from the man. Her preferences and choices differ from the man. In studying this thing, I found that I will be a better husband. There used to be a time I thought women were the same as men. But through continuous studies and learning, I started finding out oh, this thing is different. We are two different human beings. When a woman is crying, in my mind, like, can't you be a man? It's her nature. She's different. A man can do without tears. We may have them, Boku. A man can do most of the times without attention. Women need it. So you see, one of the biggest battles in marriages is the battle of this understanding. The man hardly knows anything about the woman. The woman hardly knows anything about the man. So there's a problem. Wow. 
that is what we should have been studying and not this equality problem. We, the devil gave us equality to fight. He, he, you know how the devil behaves? He, the same thing you have is what he tells you don't have. He makes the woman go around asking for equality like they are doing in the US and all that. Do you know anything you are constantly asking somebody for? You only tell the person that you have what I need. You're, and again, you're telling the person, I don't have this thing. You own it. Give it to me. Give us equal right. Give us equal right. It's, it means you don't have equal, equal right. And as long as you keep asking the world for equal right, they will keep, keep holding it back from you. Because you've already told them, we are not equal. If I don't have a phone, and I'm asking you for a phone, I'm telling you, you have something I need. I don't have a phone. Give me a phone. If I have a phone, why should I ask you a phone? So be careful what you ask for. Because some questions you're, or some things you're asking for is revealing something somehow. It's something you are revealing without knowing it. And we are women. We deserve respect. We deserve equality. We deserve to be this. We deserve to be heard. You already have it. Just express it. You see the way Buhari made Namdekano very popular. Namdekano started shouting all this is Biafra Tino from when Good Luck Jonathan was in office. Good Luck behaved like he doesn't know the guy was there. The moment Buhari came in, Namdi was it. Buhari collected the guy, put him in jail, and Namdekano became popular. The way he was released, you see the crowd. Let me tell you something. Anything you don't ignore, appreciate. <laughs> I say anything you don't ignore, it appreciates. Hey, that friend hurt you. That friend made you. You keep staying on it. You keep holding it. You keep making the person know how he has hurt you, it keeps appreciating. You start behaving like that, it never happened. <laughs> Sit down. You start behaving like that, it never occurred. There was never a thing, a time like that, it happened. The way that thing would die. Have you not noticed? You make people who hurt you feel bad about themselves when you behave like it didn't touch you. Whatever you don't ignore, it keeps happening. Ignore the equality thing. Don't talk about it. You are already equal. Express it. Leave it. The main issue that should have been in debate is how do we understand our differences? How do I as a man understand the woman and treat her like a woman, not a man? How does the woman understand the man and treat me as a man and not a woman? If we understand it, the world will be a better place. We'll have better homes. We'll have better children. We'll have better wives. We'll have better husbands. We'll have better spouses. The devil is good at putting our eyes on things we shouldn't put our eyes on. And it's deepening our crisis and deepening our, our problems without our knowing it. So women are still conversing for equality. But we are not conversing for how do we understand men? What are the makeups of men? What's the nature of the man? What's the characteristics of the man? What are his needs? What are his passions? Like one of the needs of a man is his vision. The first need of a man is not a woman. The first need of a man is to become a person, is to become somebody. The first need of a man is to become a hero. Men want to conquer. When a woman does not understand that, conflict arises. She begins to feel the man doesn't care for me. He doesn't love me. But his first passion is the vision. So now, the woman needs to understand. You see how God compliments this thing. God carries vision and puts in the man. 
Then God said, I would make a woman with software to help. I'll make a helper. Why? Hello? I'll make a helper. Who would help with the vision? So he produces a woman. Her design is help. So that either ways, by helping the man fulfill the vision, both of you are harnessing companionship. Because there's also companionship. A man also needs companionship. A woman also desires companionship. But the way God now creates the balance and puts and makes companionship sweet is that the woman must recognize her position as a helper. If she does not recognize that position, she can be frustrated. I don't know if we are getting this stuff. Are we getting this stuff? I'm not here to talk to you about the difference between the woman and the man. I want to deal with the place of a woman. I want you to restore back your place if you've lost it. Because if you know your place, then it's easy to talk about our differences. That's a subject for another time. We need to first know, because you need to be complete within first. You can't complete another until you're complete. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Like, like my, my, my vehicle, the one that had the helocs, that had an accident. We... I wanted to see if I could find, you know, it's a particular part, the front grid. It's so costly to buy. And it broke. So one of the days I was trying to see if I can complete the part. So I got the half that we found and got another part. And we tried to put it together. I think that was a bomber, yes. We tried to put it together. And the thing, it joined very well. But we found out that there was a particular rubber somewhere where the trafficator of the, the car is the bomber, the trafficator. We found that that part was completely cut off. If you know how small that part is, how small, how small, how small, how small that part is. So look at the whole big bomber like this. But one small part couldn't complete it. So this other side is there, this other side is here, joined together, but there's one hole somewhere. So I found out that even if you are a half, you need to be a complete half. Even if I'm a half, I need to be a complete half. Because if my half is not complete, I can't complete the other half. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So we found the other half, but the half is not complete. And it couldn't complement the other half of the bomber. That's why we are dealing with this issue of understanding. I understand my place as a man. I want to help the woman understand her place. When you have become complete in your place, nothing pushes you, nothing threatens you. You know, this is my habitat. I'm going to get to that in a jiffy. But can I try to talk a little on some of the controversies the men have about women? Some of the controversy our culture and our tradition, our society as it were, have about women. Because this is why the agitation is increasing. (laughs) What are some of these controversies? Some of these things that men are thinking women are that are actually wrong. Some of these things that society is thinking women are, that is actually wrong. Some of the things that our culture and tradition has branded the woman, but they are wrong. Number one, culture, tradition, society, men think women are inferior to them. Is a controversy. And women are angry about it. I want to let it known to the whole world. Women are not inferior to men. Women are superior as men are. The only subject in debate between the man and the woman is their differences and their position. Why the man is created and naturally empowered to be in the office of headship. That's in the context of marriage and in the context of spiritual authority. It's not even in every context. 
You know why most men will go and collect a woman and rape the woman? You know? Because of, they have that idea that we are superior. You guys are toys. Why not go and collect your fellow man and rape? Let's see. If he doesn't break your head. Then you see the issue of lesbianism. Why most women hate men? Is this same ideology of equality. They feel they are superior. So most women will take it to other ladies. It's ladies' word. The men say it's their word, but okay, let's create our own word. There are women who hate men. They will never stand the sight of a man. And if you trace, if that woman is genuine enough to open up to you, she will tell you things that happened in her past. Say, one guy just collected me and abused me, raped me at the age of 12, did this to me, did that to me. And she carries that heart. And the devil knows how to use your past against you. He's an expert. He knows how to use anything that happened in your life that is not pleasant. He knows how to use it. The devil's tool to destroy your future is often your heart and your past. That's what he uses. That's one of his finest tools. He uses it and disrupts things in your tomorrow. Okay. So, that concept of the women are inferior to men is a controversy. It needs to be dealt with. Can you see how those of you who are in this meeting are being blessed? Imagine what is happening to ladies who are not in this meeting. Which one is now preferable? That travel you want to do because it's vacation and this thing we are doing to help your destiny, your 30 years from now. Okay, let's leave it. Number two, one of the controversy is that the world tends to think that women have a second class position as in they, they are second class citizens. The world see women as second class citizens. Number three, another controversy is that women are seen as weak, incapable of real strength. So they always tell that women are weaker vessels. Lies. Please, sir, find me that scripture that says we should treat women as unto weaker vessels. Find it for me. Anybody who can get it, get it, put it up on the projector quickly. Let me show you what that scripture means. The Bible did not call women weaker vessels. Ha, 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 ha. The Bible said women should be entreated as like unto weaker vessels. It didn't say they are weaker vessels. Is that it? Husbands, in the same way, live with your wives with understanding of their weaker nature, yet showing them honor as co-heirs of the grace of life so that your prayers will... Okay, give me another verse, another translation. Give me the original King James Version. Good, good, good. Good. This is the real, you know, some of these new translations. Likewise, husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Do you see? That means for you to dwell with your spouse, you must have knowledge about his difference. Equality is not the difference. Equality is inherent in us. Can I hear an amen? amen? It's inherent. But our differences must be understood. That one is deliberate. You must know it. You, don't, you, you can't know your, your, the, the difference of a woman under the anointing. You must know it. You must study it. You can't know the difference of a man under the power of the Holy Ghost. You must study it. You must know it. He said, okay, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto. He didn't say they are weaker vessels. He said, as unto the weaker vessel. So that means in relating with the woman, man, because you are, you, 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 you have a position of authority. That position of headship doesn't mean you should have a position of lording it over the woman. He said, and treat them, regarding them as though these ones are weaker than you are. Because a man's strength can break a woman. So God puts something like a break. It's just like driving your car. You can do your 120, do your 140, do your 180. But 
if you are sensible, you regard that car as a mobile coffin. So once in a while, the reason for the brake there is to help you tame the speed. But the car has inbuilt ability to fly at any speed it wants. Is that right? But the manufacturer puts a restriction so that you don't apply that car at an outrageous speed. The speed is inbuilt. And at the end of the day, crash the car, crash people. So the purpose of the brake now is to help you put the car under control. So what God is trying to do here is to put the man under control. Because the strength of a man is imbued and he has the ability to crush a woman. God vested so much power in them. Amen. Vision alone. A man carrying vision is too powerful. He puts too much of power. No power to beat the woman necessarily. Too much of power in them. Do you know what it means to be a man of vision? You're too powerful. Vision is power. Let there be a light. Light stands for vision. Light is power. A man carrying vision is too powerful. That's why you see, God puts that injunction. He said, treat your women like, treat your woman like what? A weaker vessel. If you see her with that perspective, you recognize. You know, you see a man who is claiming Hokogan before a woman. You don't use weakness to prove strength. You use strength to test strength. That's what God is saying. So, don't see your woman as being strong. If you see her as being strong, you will, you will invest that strength on her. But when you look at her with a picture of she's like a weaker vessel, you will tame your strength. Then God still goes further to even mention that women take a position of submission so you don't harness that strength the wrong way. Take a position of submission. Take a position. I don't want to get into marriage seminars, oh, but amen and amen. There are women, women who are wonderful. The man have just spoken one. You have spoken ten. Kai. Oh. The way the man will calculate the kick. Any woman who is quiet when the husband is talking and the husband still beats the woman, that man must be an extra beast, an extraordinary beast. It doesn't happen anywhere. If it happens, there's something wrong with that man and needs to be dealt with. Usually, when that man starts unleashing that strength, do you know who I am? A <laughs> monyembo. Someone will just shake their breast. I'm walking that walk like that. Especially a number of men. Hey. Mwa bochuro so. Oko te kene ze kiti na goku like that. And a woman too. Eh? Nike me kono gini. If a woman finishes you in Igbo, especially Anambara people, because man, take your time. Eh? The way the man will land it, it will land like a plane crashing in the crashing from the space. You tell why? Then you lose one eye and you come to Pastor. I don't know what I did to him. I don't know what I did to him. He said, what happened? Look at my eyes. I said, what happened? Pastor, my eyes is red. <laughs> but a wise woman, a man fires one. You don't even need to keep quiet. That's the best, even if you're feeling it, that's the best time to draw out the most romantic word. My baby, I'm sorry. Hey. Women, you have power to make men feel ashamed of themselves. But you don't know that power. And you know, the natural imbued mechanism in man is ego. Ego is not pride. Ego is, do you know who I am? That position of headship. Men always like sorry. Women like affection. They like love. They like attention. They like communication. Men don't necessarily flow in that direction. They flow in the direction of, I'm sorry. 
Forgive me, Nam. Forgive me, baby. Forgive me, sweetheart. I won't do it again. They like it. That's their own attention. So even when they are wrong, they want you to be the first to say sorry. That's meant for you. They know they are wrong, or you've just misjudged them. And let me tell you how you know a man is looking for sorry for you. He keeps talking. (laughs) Once you hurt a man, and he keeps talking, he's not trying to hurt you. He's not like... He loves you too much. He's, he wants to see a broken woman. He, he's telling you directly, can't you see I'm the man here? Why not submit? Just say sorry. Can you, can you find a day? Call a day. Say sorry. But the woman will be doing badu. Hard to get. And she's still talking. The man will keep talking. <laughs> can I hear you say amen? amen. Uh-huh. Am I solving problems here? Yes. So the man, why did you do that? What's the meaning of this? How can you behave that way? No man, keep quiet. Back. Just go to the kitchen. That's where she brings one of her sacred hymns and solo. <laughs> to God be the glory. Great things he has done. <laughs> the man will go to his bedroom. All his AC. AC will be hot. He will off. And he's busy searching for remotes. For TV. Remotes on the table. He goes, who took my remotes from the <laughs> Who took my remote from the TV? It's not remote, it's his problem. He wants someone to say, I'm sorry. He wants someone to humble and say, baby, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean it that way. It will just end it. Ego is not the woman's property, it's the man's property. Don't tamper with it. Your own is to take submission. What that man has done, I say, no matter what it is, just come with. You will just end it. These are the differences. So because the woman doesn't understand that difference, doesn't know that this is how the man is made. And the man doesn't know, so this is how the woman is made in the other light. Both of them end up having unwanted and unneeded battles. Okay. So that's for treating them as, you know, like they are weaker. It doesn't mean they are weaker people. They are not weak. Actually, a woman has strength. Too. I don't want to talk to you about the strength of a woman today. A woman may not have the kind of emotional strength a man has. But she has strength when it comes to achieving. Anything you put in the hands of a woman must be done. A woman has more work strength than a man. That's why she's a helper. There are things women do. Sometimes I look at them and I'm like, my goodness. Multitaskers. A natural skill in them, natural gift in them. A woman can be batting her baby. She's checking the food on the fire. She's preparing the other guy for school. She's also preparing for work. She's going to be in the office at 8 o'clock. She will drop the children in the school at 7.30. She will fix food for the husband. She gets the office early. She fixes the place up. That's why the devil is trying to blindfold women from who they really are. It's natural in them. Women have inbuilt strength to achieve anything. It's natural. They can multitask. They can get so many things done at a time. Men are robots. When it comes to work, they can stay on one thing only. That's why you see most women who are having challenges with their husbands in the area of, you are not there for me. You are not talking to me. You are not doing this to me. You are not doing that for me actually have a problem with their is a robot thing you know women a woman can need one million things in a man at the same time that's a woman was a man who always call 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 talk to me i want to hear you call me call me be there for me always communicate that's our own love language the man's love language may not be called as long as the man knows this woman is with me we are in love. That's all for him. The woman is in the direction of call me, call me, care for me, tell me sweet things. The man is in the direction of sex, sex, sex. When he's, that's his own need. Men are more sexually active than women. The natural woman will not just have sex until you prepare her body. But the natural man doesn't need to prepare his body. He has sex all the time. He's natural in him. I don't know what they are turning on, up and down for. 
It's a natural thing in them. The women is hardly, is, her own is she's in the direction of care, love, affection, attention, call me, talk to me, and all that. And she can be in the middle of serious assignments needing all that thing. She can be in the hospital taking injection. Yeah, baby, how are you? I'm actually injecting the patient now. A man can't try it. And she will inject the patient accurately. The man can't multitask. Give him a phone and injection. He has killed you. You are going to heaven that day. But the woman has a natural ability to do it. So when the man is like, you know, a man of vision now, like me, who is so sold into the thing, I'm working, I'm having meetings, I'm doing all that, and you don't call the lady. Hmm. It's just your robotic nature you're expressing. It's not that the man has a problem. It's the robot in him that is reacting. He's created to be single-minded. That's the man. So once he has caught the vision, that thing just keeps... That's what his eyes is focused on. That's what his eyes is focused on. It takes a smart woman to get him off sometimes. So when you are supposed to come from the direction that should get his eyes off that and put it on you and you start complaining and crying and all of all that when you get married for those of you who are not married for those of you who are married well anyhow you see that these things are so the controversy of women as being weak and incapable or they don't have any strength is a fallacy from hell. That's a controversy. Women are not weak. They are strong. Women say, I am strong. Then it's finished. When an Igwe doesn't have a son to succeed his throne in any, check it now, you see it in our, in our society. They feel, what can the woman do? A business mogul is about to exit. He's praying for his son to come. Nobody wants to write the will of his company and assets in the name of a woman. He's still in our society. He's still strong. If he is the male child, the male child, the male child, who tells you that? It has been proven that women can be the best CEOs now. The best. Because another component or nature that is implanted in the woman is the nature of management. That is the job of helper. A helper is a manager. Maybe you don't know. A visioneer may be deficient in management, but not a helper. Can I use that scripture to show you how it works in the corporate world? Who is Mike Adenuga? He's a visioneer. Who is the manager, or who are these guys that manage global com companies all over Nigeria? In, like they have global com here. Is running here. They have it in Delta. It's run. They have it in Anambra. Everywhere. But Mike Adenuga is not everywhere. He is the initiator of the vision. But he cannot manage the vision. So he needs managers. Managers are helpers. They are called helpers of vision. Like banks. Jim over here. Zenith Bank. You have a manager here. It's not Jim who is here. Jim doesn't know what is going on here. As he's not present here to know what is going on here. But he has a helper here. So women have inbuilt management potential. So they tell them they cannot do anything. They can't be CEOs. They can't be managers. They can't be this. It's a lie from the pit of hell. You have an inbuilt ability to manage any investment. That's a controversy. Quickly. The society men believe that women are the personal properties of men. That means they are the equivalent of cattle, equivalent of any other possession like car, laptop, TV, and all that is a lie. Women are not properties. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're not properties. That's why he said, when my daughter gets of the age, gets to the age of being married. And she is in love with the person she knows. This is God's will for my life. We have found love. We want to spend the rest of my life. What I owe them is permission to get married. Bless them. And then 
ensure the church knows about it. The committee, marriage, whatever, do the necessary, whatever. They fix a date for wedding and they will wed. I will not give lists. Hello? That's my own tradition. I didn't see it in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, I'll start giving lists. I won't give lists. But let the son be a responsible son. There's no way he will not bless me. So all this one, we normally do list and all. That's why most men, they marry their daughters and they never go to their in-law place again. I've seen it. It's happening. You just bring problem between the family and the... You don't go. Any day the woman say, I'm, let me go and let's go to our village. He said, go to which village? We have settled your village. That arena has become settlement. It's a thing of settlement now. Settle us. Start counting all the money they invested in education. They start counting all the money they invested in our training. What is that? You were playing your role as the father. You did a good job to raise a, a, a lady society can be proud of. So why are you doing it as though you were raising her, you were holding brief for the husband? So your daughter was going to score on debt, on credit. You were paying the bills for the husband. So when the husband now comes to collect the daughter, you now tell her, God, reform me all the money I paid to raise my daughter. Have you not made that lady, have you not made a slave out of her? You know what slave masters did when they came to buy slaves here? They used money to give them, they give all these black men money and collect slaves. I wish people had the kind of knowledge I have. I won't collect money. If you're a responsible son-in-law, you will bless me with your canal gifts. You will buy a car for me. Yes, that's what I want. So I will train my daughter in a godly way. Of course, if my daughter grows up godly, grows up responsible, have the best education, she can't attract an irresponsible man in the first place. She can't even attract a pauper. You attract a man like me who understands honor. Oh, so do you love my daughter? You want to marry her? Oh, good. Oh, good. Daughter, what do you say? <laughs> Daddy, I'm in love with him. Is this God's will? Okay, give me time to pray. I go and pray, 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 pray. Find out. Oh, I feel led. This is God's will. I said, call him to come. Bring his people. Don't bring any palm wine to my house. Don't bring any cola nuts. Don't bring any five naira. I'm not giving you any list. I will even help sponsor your wedding. So when do you want your traditional wedding? Okay. Are you prepared? How much do you have? So I have all the money in the world to take care of it. What's your budget? So we're thinking of spending 50 million. I say, is it for both traditional and the white wedding? No, sir, it's just a traditional wedding. Uh, for the white wedding, we have 200 million on ground. <laughs> I'll say, mm, okay, okay. I'll, let me see if I can support you guys. Then my daughter like, no, daddy, no, 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 no. Daddy, actually, no. I was even begging him not to spend a dime. I wanted to sponsor it all through. I'm like, okay. Some people, some people will think I'm hallucinating. This is, it's calling for things that they not, as though they were. It's not hallucination. <laughs> Amen. So I don't know how you want your world to be. I'm designing my own jejeli. Still have many more years to live. Don't worry, you'll see. Open my phone. I see pictures of houses, pictures of my jet, pictures of the kind of uh, vacations and excursions. You see my children on my phone. Yes, my children are my phone. <laughs> don't you know you create children? Some of you are born. If you're born, what you're born, you don't like it. You create children deliberately. The Bible says, as we behold ourselves in a glass, that's the word of God, we are changed from glory to glory. So I behold my children. So they come. Some of you, the reason you... <laughs> Just give bets to anything. It's because you're not beholding. <laughs> Behold them. Some children I see, I say, not my child. Yeah. Not my own. My, my children. Tin cell, tin cell, tin cell. Bling, bling. Children, when you see, you know, these are in the difference between a kid. There's a difference between a baby or a child and bomboy. Pekin, thank you. You got it. Pekin. Pekin's like anytime I see their children, I like the children coming to me because you see that you see they are jebo. Ajebo. Clean. 
not Marcos. When they come to greet me, Pastor, good afternoon. Like good afternoon. I like to be around them, snap pictures with them. There are some if I say, I own children too. Hey, especially the last one. One saw me one day. The day they did uh, a program, Music Unlimited. So I came to check the setting of the hall. I didn't come dressed for the program. I came in polo trouser and I came in my pound slippers. The guy went to ease himself behind. I was going, his hand was in his pocket. He just walked. He looked at my leg. Looked at me. And he passed. He went inside. Eased myself. He eased himself. In my head, I knew this guy wants to say something. So he eased himself, came out. In his mind, where he was going, wait, let me ease myself first. So when he came back, he now paused and stopped. He said, Pastor, why are you wearing slippers? I said, you said, why are you wearing slippers? He said, taking off. He looked at me again. I said, children of God are this. You create those kind of children. I just bought children. You know? You touch the other last bones there, the lady. You do you, ow! You picture like, oops! Not ewo. <laughs> Not chideke mo. Chideke me. Mata do me na 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 <laughs> you create it though. <laughs> Born something your own, your your own. I won't dedicate. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so women are not personal. They are not properties. You catch what I'm saying? Stop seeing them as something to pay for. They are not cars. They are not houses. They are not chairs. They are not properties you pay for. Why don't they pay for the men? If we should pay for the women, after paying for the women, the women should come and pay for the man too. That's why the, the man starts domineering on the woman. I paid your bike bride price. And what's that? Two people are in love. Let them be in love and let them get married. What are you collecting money for? How many of you love me? Amen. Okay, the next point, the controversy, another controversy is that they are uh, seen as personal servants whose purpose is to meet the needs of their masters. That's all, personal servants. If you want to understand how women have been bastardized, go and study slavery. Study slave era. Study slave trade. I have some movies like that, like Roots, Kunta Kinte. Just go and watch those movies. You will see how the woman was reduced. She, she's just the personal property of her master. Do whatever you want to do with any time you want. Discard her if you want to discard her. And all of all that. Okay, they are seen as domestic slaves to be used as desired. That's another controversy. Another controversy is that they are objects to be passed around until finished with and then discarded. That's how a lot of women are viewed. So most men you see in club are discussing what the, the encounter they had with the lady last night. So, after that, don't worry, it's your turn next. Most ladies have been reduced to that level, actually. Reduced to be seen as just maybe toys to be passed from one guy to the other. That's why I'm praying that in this conference, God will raise some of you to become change agents. Some of you you need to become prepared to go and solve these problems. 95% of womanhood is going through crisis. Not so many of them are free. They are in the church, they are in, they are in the churches, they are in schools, they are in you know, the corporate world and different places, but they are not free. Now you who is hearing this and you're getting freedom, don't hold it back. You have to take it back to them and begin to dis dispense this same thing to them. On your campuses, in your offices, anywhere you are. Let's help liberate our world of women. Another one is they are seen as people deserving of abuse. They are seen as subhuman. They are not seen as real humans. They are seen as subhumans. Oh, glory to God. So now, finally. How does a woman discover her place? What is the place of a woman? 
did God create the woman to be a man's possession? Did God create the woman to be second class like all the controversies I've read? What is the place of a woman? And this is where I end it. The place of a woman is not her husband's place. Today you are Obiageli or Kafo. After 25 years, you become Obiageli Ekuma. So you're like um, flavor will tell you, Daddy, bye bye. Mommy, bye bye. After nine months, you will come again with a boy and girl. Hannah, where is your man? Ada, ada, yo. So the girl is confused. It's like, okay, for a while, my place is Abbas family, like my sister. And tomorrow she becomes Amarachi Johnson. Amen. Amen. She becomes another person. The way she sees me, who is still Prince Abba, she starts feeling I'm no longer from their place. Yes, some of you know this thing. That's why you see people, most ladies get emotional during their wedding. <laughs> Daddy, mommy, help, Chibo. You have a constant place. I want to show you what that place is. Your place is not where you have been and finally migrated to another place. Your place is not the kitchen. Like most women are made to believe. The woman's education ends in the kitchen. Your place It's not even your business. That kiosk or that shop. Those clothes you sell. Those food items you sell. Can I tell you your place? If you know this place, this place, you, you don't, it doesn't change location. It's constant. And it's in that place you find your assignment. That place is not just a person. That place is a habitat. That place is an environment. <laughs> that place is called God. Can I tell you something? For a woman who is going to fulfill her assignment, she must be constantly in God. Because for the woman, God means girl on discovery. You do not yet know who you are, what you have, and what you can do on this earth until you are constantly in God girl on discovery girl on development girl on deployment stand on your feet let's pray all the confusion of life you have all the headache all the traumas and all the issues he, my boyfriend he broke my heart my father he abused me my this that what happened they have sent me to this other location i'm now in full night i'm now here and there i'm this one those confusions will end if you discover that your habitat is in god so what should a woman who is wrapped up in god be doing seeking him studying him studying the world praying what makes that life inferior so you, the ladies would 
There are ladies who deceive you by thinking that if you are a church girl, you are a, you are a, bo, you are a board girl, you are a Jew girl. You see, worldly girls are the real Jew girls. The real girls are church girls. You see, all these, all these ladies who are claiming they've got swag, they don't have the real swag. Church girls have the real swag. Do you know what swag is? Swag simply means sisters with amazing grace. So, ladies got the real swag. The ladies in church got the real swag, not the girls out there. So, what kind of life should you live? A godly life. A life that is wrapped up in Christ. A life wrapped up in the word of God. A life that is always kuku parakara karatere tere jagadagada marataratoro. That's the kind of life a girl should live. A life that can dissect scriptures. When you grab the microphone, you are talking. People are wondering who is this girl. Can we raise giants for the kingdom of God in Priestley Hills? That's what God called me to do. Not the confusion going on in this age. Let me say vibrating tongues here. A man has no other option than to open his eyes and he's watching. Who, who be that girl? Who is that lady there? Do you know even unbelieving men admire spiritual ladies? As in the highest point of your attraction is your spirituality. You attract only dogs by your carnality. Any man who... Do you know, I found out every lady who is attracted to me is attracted by the anointing. Attraction is not a bad thing. It's attracted by the anointing. It's not because, oh, this guy is cute. This guy may be very good in bed. It's not that. Even if that's one of the uh, but I know the first point of attraction is spirituality. There are people who see my pastor's wife, <laughs> she's married with kids, and they wish they can marry her. So you can't do anything about it. But they just wish, I wish I, I wish I married this woman. You're not in fear because you speak in tongues. You're not in fear because you're spiritual. You're not in fear because you don't have a makeup on your face. You're not in fear because you know we are in leggings. And jeans string pants. I'm talking real issue here. So those legs are confused. What is raining now? Is G to the strings? They go and buy. Catapult. You think I've not seen it? I've seen it. You guys should be walking on the road. Oh jeez. That's oh in accident. I, I live in the compound. People wash, they hang their things, and I see them. Come and beat me. Let me see. For seeing it, they hand their wonder brass. Let's see them. So it's about fashion now. What is invoke? What is invoke is God. You can't update him. He's the one that updates you. See all of these pants people used to wear before. See some of them have changed now. Tomorrow is catapult that is raining. After catapult, who knows? What will rain again? The world of women cannot make up their mind on what is fashionable or not. T tomorrow it is a uh, wonder bra. It is a uh, sleeveless bra. The one that you. Can't you see the wedding gown my mother used? <laughs> if you bring it now, wedding gowns are changing. I've seen all kinds of wedding gown. But the one that looks like fish, the one that has like a Demophis wife's own, too long. Something you wear one day. But ladies think that is the definition of womanhood. Some think it's in the makeup they do on their wedding day. And all that. And the flower, bridal train. Must we have bridal train? To be a woman. It's your birthday. Why not celebrate the birthday in your room, fasting and praying? Must you go to crunches? Every woman, when it's her birthday, must do the same thing ordinary ladies are doing. Why not wake up on your birthday, collect a seed, go and meet your pastor? It's my birthday today. I'm on fasting. Pray with me, sir. 
drop the seed. Lock up yourself in the name of Jesus. I've had another year. Look at I'm drawing closer to my grave. What is my purpose here on earth? What God, would you would you not use me, Jesus? God, would you not make use of me? What am I here for? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've tracked the one the next the last one year. Is this the little I can do for your kingdom? God help me. Anoint me. Feel me. But now <laughs> Queen, it's my birthday. <laughs> Joy, Juliet, it's my birthday. And it's oh, babe. They go and get your picture and they catch you with cake. Snap you. Bam, and put it on social media. And write one long text that is not true. She's a role model. A supporter. Very industrious. She's true. In fact, she's, I've never seen any birthday text on Facebook that is, uh, that is wrong. That is something bad. It's always... And I look at it. I say, well, let me go to the woman's name and see if there's something about the girl. Let me go on her Facebook and see what is on. You go on Facebook and see it's the usual nonsense. And she's a woman of virtue. There is a mistake in our generation that needs to be corrected. And God is going to correct it with you and he's going to release, he's going to raise you to correct it in your word. Now, your life as a woman should be a consistent work with God. Not today in him, tomorrow out. Today in, you will sabotage your destiny that way. Do you know God is like an ocean? The more you swim him, the more you can't finish swimming him. You need to keep swimming. You swim, you think you're getting to the end. You keep swimming, you can't finish swimming. That's how God is. So, the more you are in him, there's a newer dimension of him you get to know. Apart from that, there is also a newer dimension of you that is revealed. A newer dimension of your purpose that comes alive. A newer dimension of your essence that is being revealed. That's why you must be there constantly. The moment the fish leaves water, it starts struggling. No matter how you try. Bring fish out of water and put it on land, it starts struggling until you bring it back to the habitat. God is your habitat. I actually put it this way to be in God is to be in life no life without God that's why I told you that for the woman God is girl on discovery but it doesn't end on discovery I use the trinity to represent this stuff there is girl on discovery in God the father there's girl on development in God the Son because if you look at how the disciples were raised, it's the Son that did the job. <laughs> development. It's not the Father. God's job is to expose you to you. Then He transfers to the Son to do the training. Jesus is our teacher. He's our role model. He's our trainer. That's why He was the one the Father sent to raise the men. So girl on discovery is a girl in God the Father girl on development is a, a girl yielded to Jesus' teachings, yielded to the word because Jesus is called the word of God, yielded to the Bible yielded to the word of God you do not do anything without that word it's girl on development then girl on deployment is a girl wrapped up in the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is the one that launches your assignments. That's why he's called the Lord of the Harvest. The Holy Ghost is the Lord of the Harvest. He's the one in charge of the Great Commission. He's the one in charge of the go ye into the world and preach the gospel. It is not Jesus that does that job. Jesus' is only is to train the workers, train the men. His only is to go back, release the Holy Ghost to send them. Release the Holy Ghost to go with them. So he's the one that goes so if you're going to be a deployed agent of change so instead of being a girl wrapped up in makeup and wrapped up in makeups are good do them i love good makeups you know if you're a lady wrapped up in addiction or wrapped up in friends and social media why not cut down on all those things social media some of you need to delete your whatsapp i'm serious recently i thought of doing the same on my phone because these are some of the little little lies the devil uses now to cut short our destinies 
Recently, I went and removed my picture from my DP, and I know why. I'm not on anything called Facebook, but I do Facebook somehow. I would rather spend time on godly Facebook than go and be opening some rubbish and all, all of all those stuff. Look at the kind of phone I use. What does it tell you? See the screen, don't break finish. I don't have that time. I want to stay in God because I know my vulnerability. The greatest truth you can ever tell in life is the truth you tell yourself. Let's not deceive ourselves. The greatest truth you can ever tell in life is the truth you tell yourself. Billy Graham said, I have a weakness. My weakness is that if I carry a lady in my car and I see her legs, I start, I start dropping. On my, he didn't say it before he became the greatest word evangelist. He said it as the greatest word evangelist. I know my vulnerability, my friend. So, you know, his, the, only his wife enters his car. He doesn't carry his wife. So, I know my vulnerability on social media. I know it. I've seen ladies who go on social media and strange ladies I don't know from anywhere. Cutie pastor. I love your pink lips. I, um, this is my phone. Some have sent me porn. I'm serious. Porn. They have sent me. All kinds of things they have done. And I'm like, God, deliver me from strange women. Do you know the problem of Samson was not women. It was strange women. The problem of Solomon was not women. The Bible said Solomon married strange wives that turned his heart away from God. Thinks everything that is on schedule as a woman. There are many out there just setting trap, looking for how to get the guy. So they use social media and they are trying to I say, I know how this thing works. Many people who's I did, I don't know how they get my number. I don't know from where it comes. Just see one message on my phone. I look at it. Do I know you? Yes, sir, you know me. You've been to my uh, state before. You were here some time ago. I got your number from Susan Superson. Da, da, da. And that time the guy is talking is when she go and change her DP. And the kind of DP she will knock you. Or that's when she wants to confirm who is really talking. And she sends you fire called picture. You want to speak in tongues then? So what I do is I quietly remove my DP first because I know in, inevitably I should be on WhatsApp because of a few other things I do with it that are useful. But now I have to block certain numbers. If you know I block numbers now, I block numbers like crazy. I block. Some of you won't block. You, you don't want to be into it, but you enjoy what the guy is saying. We are not doing anything, pastor. He has not touched me. I have not touched him. But you enjoy the rhymes. It's trap. And trap doesn't need to look like trap. It will carry the thing you like. So you see rats. Once it sees trap, what it sees is meat, not trap. But once it goes for the meat, jump. Catches it. So that thing that you're always fun, if you know the, you see, I can relate with sisters in church, play with sisters. But you guys, you can hardly see a woman you don't know around me. Have you seen that? Hard. I say hard. Have you seen it? Hard. Can't come to my house and see a woman you don't know. If you see a lady around me, is a brethren in church. You can't see a woman you don't know around me. And you think I don't know why? I don't entertain strangers. Hi, 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 hello, and I move. Collect my number for what? Until I'm sure of you and I'm sure you're part of my sheepfold. Can't do crunches for what? What are we going there to do? Magbite for what? So when they start giving you those jeans, hello sir, it starts from there, hello sir. Like yes, how will you? God bless you. Thank you very much sir, amen. Sir, I just want to appreciate you for all the things you are doing sir, for humanity and thank you. So how are you today sir? The guy is switching small, small. I'm fine. You know, it's usually sweet. It starts like that. You know, it's, it's getting deep. It's getting deep. It's getting deep. From nowhere, you are still talking things you shouldn't talk. You're enjoying it. You've not touched him. He has not touched you. But you guys are already seen enough on WhatsApp. That's the lies on social media. Some of you know what I'm saying. But no, happy fun. You know, there's an addictive spirit in the thing. And what social media does is it helps you build the chemistry 
that distance game is usually sweet. Then when both of you come together, you can't wait to see how it feels in real reality. I'm telling you what I have been involved in, not what they told me in books. I've been into this thing. Just a phone of see somebody's picture on Facebook and you're chatting. Ah, when I was on campus. Now. You just chat. You can't wait. You can't wait for this person to see this stranger who has been talking with you so nicely and sweet. You can't wait. It's so addictive. The chemistry is so sweet. I have tasted it. It is so sweet. Then finally, you guys meet. You can't comport yourself. And you, you want to see this guy who has been sweeping you off your feet. You want to see this guy who has been sweeping you off your feet from meeting. Lift up your hands. Father, I pray for everyone in this house. Let the revolution destiny revolution begin right now thank you for what you have done in this meeting this morning as we come back at 5 p.m we pray that you would equip us this evening let us experience another version of the encounter to the glory of your name and to the shame of the devil in jesus name we have prayed take up your offerings let's bless the lord father we bless our offerings and we ask that you would give back to us Lord, this evening you said that you are going to bring the supernatural into the meeting and causes will be broken. All the things holding women back will be broken. Women will be free from poverty, free from all kinds of things. Lord, as we come back in the evening, let that journey begin in our lives. Thank you for giving to us to give back to you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 0806-499-5029, 0812-511-3214. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.